Congress is doing their bread and circus routine, uh, grilling the CDC chief. Uh, and Nina Pham, I believe her name is, is being transferred here to uh, the D.C. area to the National Institutes of Health. Get her out of that Texas hospital. Um, not sure exactly why. Uh, presumably it's because there's better care. I'm also wondering if maybe in the hospital in Texas people are just saying, hey, I, Ebola, I'm not going near it after what's happened. So let's ask Roseanne DeMauro, the executive director of National Nurses United. NationalNursesUnited.org is the website. Uh, Roseanne, welcome to the program. Hey, Tom. Thank you for having me on. It's always Appreciate great talking it. with you. Um, you, know, you guys, by the way, I do want to thank you for the uh, coverage you've been giving this so far. <laughs> it's good. You're welcome. And I think it's, you know, it's, uh, we have talked on this program about how the lack of unions in Texas puts all workers at risk. Here is, you Absolutely. know, hyper case in point. Texas is a right to work for less state. Uh, Absolutely. You know, they aggressively trash unions. We've got a so-called not-for-profit hospital here that's actually funded by a, by a company that's, that is funded by a venture, a vulture capital firm, you know, a Mitt Romney kind of firm. <laughs> and, and last year, they, they showed an 8.3%. They call it a fund balance, but it's actually a profit, which is higher than their 7% profit from the previous year. Yeah, I mean, there's just, what's going on down in Texas? What, what is it that we need to know about what's happening? Well, you know, I think I have to kind of disaggregate the two. What's happening in the Dallas hospital could have actually uh, been any hospital in this country because we have uh, essentially vacated the any notion of a, uh, of a healthcare system in favor of a, a market-based healthcare industry, <clears throat> and, <clears throat> excuse me, Tom, and we're seeing the the direct effects of that. I mean, the status quo is indefensible if it puts people's lives at risk, and that's what we have, and that's what we're unable to move our legislators from so far. I mean, we every day we have nurses. You know, we had nurses in Texas come forward. They came forward anonymously because they were very fearful for their jobs. So your point on the unions is 100% accurate. Um, they were so afraid when they were talking to us, they were trembling. But their, and their story was so compelling in terms of everything that went wrong. What was um, particularly, I, I'd say, the most kind of outrageous thing was that there were no protocols in place in that hospital, and yet they tried to blame the nurse that, that had contracted Ebola for not following protocol. So what happened after that was we held an informational press conference um, that said, don't blame nurses. The nurses saw that from the National Nurses United, and they called, they called us and they, they wanted to talk because they could not take the fact that they were being blamed for what was the most chaotic, just, uh, just complete void of any type of actual procedures and policies and protocols that should have been in place. But I am telling you that could be any hospital in this country. And that's what we're hearing from nurses across the nation, and we're hearing it, we're hearing it loudly. I mean, we had a conference call yesterday. We had 11,500 nurses on that call looking for answers. Mm. That, that shouldn't be the responsibility of the nurses. That should be policy in this country. Right. In other words, we, we are the only developed country in the world that does not have a national health care system. Absolutely. And it's indefensible because it kills people. Yeah. And, and that's as... what we saw. I mean, just flat out, that's what we've seen. You know, this, this is the, the, the policymakers are, are dragging their feet. And I'll tell you, it's a bipartisan thing. It's not, you know, every day these, the CDC, because of the pressure, where the nurses in the country are ramping up. Um, you know, the nurses are the, are the vocal voice on this. Yeah. Because of the pressure of the nurses, the CDC and the Obama administration have to keep, you know, restating different uh, protocols. They should go to the precautionary principle. They should have, you know, do no harm as their first principle and have protection for these health care providers who could possibly infect other people if they become infected. Right. This is so, and you know what? The wealthy are not going to escape this one, Tom. They're not going to escape this one. Because yeah. I don't, you know, defunding the health care system and thinking that they were somehow immune, that, that is going to blow up. And, and what's really, I'm sorry, I know this sounds like a rant, but I am really upset about this. This young woman is 26 years old. Single young woman, has a dog, works hard, comes home, right? She, she's trying to take care of her life. She contracts evil. She's trying very hard to take care of, of uh, Mr. Duncan that died. Then, then you turn around, and if this, were, if this were a CEO, if this were a legislator, if this were a movie star, they would have changed protocols immediately. But it was only a nurse, only right. a nurse. 
Right. And this, in fact, I think that, you know, n- nursing is a profession that is uh, pretty much dominated by women and exactly. is, is by and large viewed as subordinate to doctors. In fact, I discovered when our, our oldest daughter got our Ph.D. in nursing that I don't know if this is Oregon law or federal law or whatever, but she cannot refer to herself as Dr. Hartman um, because the doctors don't allow a nurse with a Ph.D. Now, a person who has a Ph.D. in psychology can call themselves Dr. Hartman, yes. but not somebody with a Ph.D. in nursing, which blows my mind. So anyhow, what we're seeing is that, no, you know, doctors, do, oh, go ahead. It, but what we saw was that when Duncan showed up in the ER, it was the triage nurse who was blamed. Nobody talked about the doctor. Uh, it, 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 the administration of the hospital was never blamed. It, it, and then when the nurse, a, a nurse gets sick, it's that nurse broke protocol. Then we discover there's no protocols. Now we've got a second nurse. And it's, it, there's just massive blame the victim it's unconscionable. here. It's unconscionable. It was chaotic. And these, these nurses that were, were basically told you've basically to figure it out themselves. They, had, they don't control the budget. They don't control the physicians. They don't control the administration. They don't even get to order supplies, or they would probably want to have protection for themselves, I would say. So here's a situation where we basically, where these young nurses were doing their job. They're humanists. You know how beautiful nurses are. I mean, they're just, they're beautiful people. I do. And, you know. I have one in the family. On, <laughs> and they're put on the front lines without the proper equipment. I mean, part of the, the thing that, you know, I said in my letter yesterday to the president, requ- demanding, not requesting, demanding that they issue an executive order, like they do when they're sending people off to war today, um, that uh, an executive order to protect our nurses with the optimal standards by uh, the right. standards of the Nebraska Medical Center, University of Nebraska. And uh, what and what happened today is very funny. What what's happened today? He's being responsive by and and I I would say that this is undoubtedly coming from the Obama administration, the hospital administrators. They're putting these kind of faux nurse groups on television to quell fears and act like everything's okay. Everything is not okay. Right. It's not going to be okay now, until our front line people are protected from this this virus and they're able to protect this country. And not just and this virus. There's a, there's, there's a whole bunch of zoonotic viruses out there. There's there's uh, flu out there. There's uh, you know the potential for the return of the 1918 flu. Uh, there's smallpox could be, you know, could pop back up again. I mean, there's all kinds of things out there that, that are potential threats that are re- good reasons to have a national health care system. You pointed out, I, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, um, in an interview yesterday that the lever, and we have just a minute left here, that the lever that the president could use to demand national standards is if you as a hospital intend to take Medicare or Medicaid money, you must meet these standards. Is that precisely? Precisely. Okay. That's his lever. He should have more levers. He should have a health care czar that can actually dictate safety measures to hospitals. But it's an industry. It's not a system. Right. These are for-profit competing sectors that essentially are about money. And, we're, and the nurses are about patients. And we have a conflict like I've never seen in history. Yeah. And this, this is the kind of lever that, for example, Jimmy Carter used the, oh, you want federal highway funds? Lower your speed limit to save, you know, to conserve fuel during the, fu- exactly. during the, during the crisis. Um, it would be basically doing the same thing. Any feedback from the administration about whether they're considering that? Uh, you know, yesterday at the president, uh, no, the, yesterday the president canceled two of his trips, right. and, he, and his quote last night was he's going to push out communications. You know, our president's a great pragmatist, and the problem is that the, the, the uh, wealthy sector eats him alive. Yeah, yeah. He needs to push out. Exactly. He needs to push out out orders. How about pushing out mandates? There you go. There you go. There you go. Roseanne tomorrow. I'm sorry we're out of time. But at nationalnursesunited.org is the website. The executive director of uh, National Nurses United, Roseanne tomorrow. You are doing God's work, Roseanne. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you.